The sea anemone is a predatory marine animal of the order Actinaria. Named after the anemone, a terrestrial flower, sea anemones belong to the phylum Nidaria, like its distant cousin the jellyfish, and its much closer relative, the corals. The sea anemone in its most commonly known form, its adult stage, and the most common one you'll see when diving, is a polyp, a cylindrical body attached by an adhesive foot to surfaces. Sea anemone polyps vary in size from a tiny, whiny little 4 millimeters in size to a relatively massive 2 meters, and they can have anywhere from a few dozen to a few hundred singing tentacles. Nidarians typically go through a multi-stage life cycle. As I've discussed before, with the jellyfish, a free-floating medusa releases ova and sperm into the water, which fertilize and grow into larval jellyfish, which ultimately attach itself to its surface as a polyp. This polyp will feed over time using its stinging tentacles, before performing fission and splitting to segments of its body, forming new free-floating medusa. The sea anemone, however, never enters the medusa phase. The polyp itself produces eggs and sperm, which ultimately form new polyps. Polyps typically stay in the same place nigh indefinitely once attached, but they are capable of releasing themselves and moving their body to swim to a new location. In fact, there are a few free-floating sea anemone polyps that eschew attachment altogether in the favor of gas pockets. The sea anemone probably is most famous for its many stinging nematocysts, which, when triggered, launch a harpoon-like structure that launches into the triggering organism and injects venom into it. These toxins paralyze its prey, allowing them to move it to their centrally located mouth for digestion. And what kind of prey does the sea anemone feed on? Well, anything that's really small enough that they can capture and eat. Fish and crustaceans, typically. But the sea anemone doesn't feed on all fish and crustaceans, mind you. In fact, the sea anemone is rather famous as a prime example of the kinds of complex symbiotic relationships that can be developed in the wild by very different complex animals, thanks to evolution. Anemone fit, ugh. Anemone fish, also known as clownfish, are fish of the family Pomaxendridae, also containing those damselfish jerks. With vibrant yellowish and orangish coloration and vertical white stripes, they're quite distinct and visually interesting. But they're also engaged in symbiotic mutualism with sea anemones. See, not all marine animals are vulnerable to the sea anemone. A number of fish, sea slugs, and starfish have developed immunity to its nematocyst and will feed on their tentacles or the sea anemone entirely. The mostly stationary sea anemone has little it can do against this kind of attacker, making it extremely vulnerable beyond engaging in the old evolutionary toxin arms race. But through the anemone fish, the sea anemone has another ace in its tentacles. The anemone fish is also immune to the sea anemone's toxins and in fact will dwell within its tentacles for protection. In exchange for this protection, along with scraps that it may have left over, the anemone of fish in turn protects the sea anemone from predators, as well as from parasites. Not only that though, but the anemone of fish actually excrete nitrogen, which helps support another symbiotic relationship the anemone tenders, that with single-celled green algae. Many sea anemone incorporate such algae into their gastrodermal cells. The sea anemone gets oxygen as well as food through the algae's photosynthesis, while the algae in turn are protected from microfeeders and receive relatively reliable exposure to sunlight. Everybody wins! But wait, there is more! The anemone has another rather famous symbiotic relationship that it finds itself wrapped into. Crabs. See, a variety of crabs have developed a rather unusual symbiosis with sea anemones. They wear them. Quite a few species of hermit crabs will, if they find a suitable polyp, attach them to their shell as a protective anemone guardian. These hermit crabs will attach between one and several such anemones to their shell for protection, which then expand to cover its surface. And often a young hermit crab will attach a similarly very young anemone to its shell, and as they both grow, it will transfer the anemone to its new home with it when it changes shells, forming a lifelong relationship with it. What do they both get out of this relationship? Well, obviously the crab gets protection from a number of fish which would rather not eat something covered in stinging death. The sea anemone, on the other hand, gets, well, food scraps, the crab will give it some sides, 
and it gets its own protection, of course, from the crab. There are some fish that will mess with that scene enemy. They don't want to mess with the crab. And it also gets some mobility. Crabs get around. That scene enemy doesn't have to worry about a slow-ass starfish creeping up and getting onto it. No, sir. There's another fascinating crab in it. Blah, 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 blah. Enemies are very hard to say. There's another fascinating crab sea anemone symbiosis in that of the crab genus Libya, also known as the boxer or pom pom crabs. They hold sea anemones in their claws. It is awesome. But yes, sea anemones. Very cool. Very hard to say. Really quickly. Sea anemones. Sea anemones. Sea anemones.